Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and today I want to show you how I would lay, uh, underlay, uh, pr preparing for vinyl flooring in this bathroom. Um, so the product we're going to be laying, this is just a small sample of it, is basically a, a pressed board, glue and, and wood chips pressed together. Uh, this stuff is about, uh, I think, 5 sixteenths thick. Um, and it comes in uh, four by eight sheets. I think you can also get it in four by four sheets, just depending on what you exactly need. So this is just a sample, like I said. Um, we're gonna show you how to mark it out, cut it, and fasten it in place, and uh, then it's ready to prep for vinyl. So uh, one of the first things though, before we even get to that, is we actually need to get the uh, subfloor itself, this floor here, that's in your in your room whether it's bathroom kitchen whatever what have you here we've got uh, 5 8 plywood it was the original subfloor uh, we went through it was all nailed down before so we went through and we added screws about every six inches just to take out any squeaks or loose spots or anything so we did that in preparation um, one other thing we did here here's the toilet flange this just isn't glued on yet um, so around the original toilet flange, uh, the toilet obviously had been leaking for a while. There was a bit of rot, so we, we cut out a pretty good patch and replaced it and reinforced it with some extra blocking down below and then screwed and glued it into place. Uh, you might be able to see a bit of staining here still. Uh, that definitely did get wet at some time, but uh, we just cut as far as we needed to to get rid of any of the real rot. So. Um, so that's one thing, I'm just going to cover this up so we don't get too much sewer gas. I left this loose so that we could put down our underlay and then uh, put this in place. This should be sitting on top of the underlay, it's not 100% necessary but we were able to do that in this case so that's why it's loose. Um, anything else that's protruding out of the floor uh, you need to be able to measure for and, and get your underlay in here. We've got a, a hot air vent over here got a few water lines over here so uh, these are all protrusions that need to be cut out so that we can get the sheet laid in here. Uh, something else to talk about, uh, you've, you can see this green strip of tape I've put on the front of the new tub. Uh, basically that's there just to protect the tub so we don't scratch it and uh, also uh, when uh, if you watch my next video on prepping this floor in order to lay vinyl you'll see that we use some uh, uh, concrete kind of leveling product on here and I, it's just to keep that from getting on the tub so that tape obviously will be stripped off afterwards. So that's one thing. Now another thing that uh, you need to remember when planning this out, in this room our floor joists are going this direction, they're kind of going the length of the room here. The original sheeting was laid perpendicular to them which is correct and we're actually going to follow that same direction so our, our sheets are going to run perpendicular to the floor joists as well uh, but what we want to try to do is not have our joints in our underlay line up with the joints in the plywood so we want to stagger the joints from how the plywood was laid and this particular room it works out well we can start with a sheet that's uh, you know around five feet long here and four feet wide and come up against the tub and actually we end up about a foot from the other joint in the original plywood so so that's all going to work out quite fine if it didn't work out we would just cut this first sheet in order to to stagger our joints um, something else when you lay that first sheet in I like to leave you know a sixteenth of an inch or so between the sheet and the tub and the reason for that is these fiberglass and acrylic tubs they will sometimes get a bit of flex to them when people are getting in and out and when they flex that means they're moving slightly and if you're right tight uh, you'll sometimes get a squeaking sound between the wood and the, and the face of the tub so I leave just a little bit of a space there and uh, that way we can hopefully prevent any squeaking that isn't necessary. Um, now something else that we can talk about before we really get into the project is fastening it down. Most commonly most people will use these uh, ring nails and you can find them at pretty much any hardware store they're going to sell ring nails. Uh, you would want to be uh, at least I would say three times longer in length 
than what the actual thickness is that you're putting down. So, uh, you know, we're putting down um, pretty much three, three eighths type uh, underlay. So you'd want to be, uh, what's that come out to inch and a quarter or whatever? No, sorry. Uh, yeah, but at least inch and a quarter. And that's probably what these are. Um, so they're just kind of ribbed. They uh, are supposedly basically are, are not supposed to pull out. I have found that these over time, over a period of about 10 years, sometimes these will still squeak a little bit. They start to work their way loose. Um, so I've kind of stopped using them, but uh, they're, still re they're still actually the recommended fastener. Um, and they just simply hammer in with a normal hammer. Um, so that's the one, that's one thing. I, usually what I'll do, I'll put my sheets down and I might just tack the sheets, you know, in the corners with these just to keep it from moving while I'm putting the other sheets in. <coughs> what I actually use is called a diversion point staple. So I shoot these in with an air stapler. And uh, these are designed, and I'm, I know you won't be able to zoom in enough, but the, the actual points on the two legs of the staples are clipped off at opposite sides. So that what happens when the staple drives in, instead of just the two points driving straight down, uh, like a, a generally a normal staple would. These ones are clipped on two different sides. So they actually, one will go one direction and one will go the other, which actually creates a little more holding power because it's harder for them to actually work their way straight out because of the force of, of those angles working against it. So, so uh, these are getting a little harder to find, at least here in Canada, but uh, I've still got a bit of a stockpile. So, so that's what I use. Um, Something else, and I'll point it out when we get right out to the sheet, you really can't tell on this, on this sample, there is one spot, but uh, there's the uh, underlay is gonna be marked for where all the nails or staples, whatever you're using, the fasteners need to go. There'll be a little painted X or uh, dot or whatever on there. And so that, that's the recommended amount of staples. I, I believe, no, I'm not even sure, I think in the main field of the of the sheet it's four inches apart and along the edge it's every two inches so it, ne it takes quite a few fasteners to hold it down to keep it flat and level so i think the next thing we're going to do i've kind of got things pre-cut but we're going to go out to where i've got them sitting on the sawhorse just so i can show you what the sheet looks like show you some of the cuts i did um, when you're measuring like the width of the room this room was 59 and a half inches i believe it was so I, I went just you know a quarter inch less than that because by the time you put your baseboards on and that it's it's going to cover anyways and it'll just give you a little bit more room same thing around anything you're cutting out leave some extra space so that uh, you can easily you know maneuver around it remember we've still got to put in some uh, some planing patch some kind of patching compound so you know if there's some small imperfections we can fill that up with there with that okay i think uh, i think we're ready to go look at that sheet Okay, so we just came out here in the other room where there's a little, little more space. Uh, so I was just talking about the uh, nailing marks on the sheet and actually I guess they're six inches apart out here in the main area and they're three inches apart on the edges. So you can see the little, little marks they have there uh, uh, for their suggestion of uh, where to nail it and, and stick with their suggestion. It's there for a reason, so use it. Um, you can just see some of the cuts. Obviously I've got it cut to length here. We're 59 and a quarter or whatever it was. I've got some cuts here because the, the floor register starts to lead into the sheet here. I've got the cutout for the toilet flange, the toilet water supply, and another water supply over here for the vanity. So not too much to show you. Basically just mark everything out, uh, cut it out. I used a combination of a jigsaw and a, a circular saw to uh, make all these cuts. So um, not too much as far as, uh, as that goes. Now our other piece, I'll just flip it up here right on top of this first one. So here's our other piece. You can see we've got the continuation of the air vent there and another cutout and uh, jog here where the, where the closet is. So just thought it was worth showing you, but yet I uh, didn't think you really needed to see me cutting it out physically. Um, I'm thinking if you don't know how to use those tools, you probably shouldn't be doing this job anyway. So measure once. Sorry, measure twice, cut once, uh, as the old saying goes, and uh, you should be all right with that. So, and it doesn't hurt, take it in there, dry fit it, make sure everything fits and lines up properly. And uh, you can always bring it back out and trim it up. So, 
Okay, so uh, we're gonna move these. Uh, I'm gonna start taking these into the bathroom and uh, we'll get the first one, this one here, laying in place. Okay, so we're back in the bathroom here. I brought the first piece in. We're gonna get ready to lay it down. Something else I didn't mention is to make sure you vacuum the floor really well. Bring in your shop vac, get any little slivers of wood or lumps of mud or anything like that scraped up and cleaned up. So here we go, hopefully she fits the first time. So you can see I'm just kind of sliding it over. You can see my waterline cuts are actually slotted so that I can slip it underneath there and slide it over. Try not to hit my new walls. Just like so. So then I'm just gonna go over along the edge of the tub, kind of get myself orientated to the space I want. Just like that. So I've got a little, little more space here in the middle. The front of the tub must have a little bit of a bow in it, but I've still got my clearance uh, on the two ends that I like, so I'm gonna leave it that way. If this was excessive, I would take this back out. First I would scribe a line with my pencil, just running it right along the edge of the tub, and then take it out and jigsaw it, you know, if it was say a half inch or something goofy like that, but uh, I, I can live with this, that's, that's not an issue at all. So we got in around everything. My toilet flange will fit down in there, so that's good. So I'm gonna take uh, a couple ring nails and just tack this one in place, because I'm happy with it. And uh, then I can bring in the second piece and try it out. We're good around the vent here. The one thing with the ring nails is making sure that what you actually want to do is leave a little bit of a dimple. So once you've got it in there, you actually want to give it a good smack so it actually leaves a dimple in the surface of this. You wouldn't think this would dimple, being the product it is, but it does. Uh, and then that will fill in with your, uh, with your um, uh, floor patch. Just put another one over here. I'll just stick one over here for now. So that's just uh, simply holding that in place so it doesn't move around on us uh, uh, until we can get it all stapled down. So I'll bring in the next piece and get it laid in here. Hopefully it fits as good as that one did. I will admit I did dry fit these once first already and then I took them out made the adjustments but I haven't did a second dry fit on them. so. Uh, just hoping that they kind of fit here on the second go around. So again, it's just a matter of getting it in here without hitting the walls. I've already got the walls painted, so I'm trying not to do any damage. I'm just kind of sliding things together here. Just gonna get a bar. The tin of this vent is kind of holding it up a little bit. I'll get a little bar and I'll be right back. Just maneuver that out of the way if I can. Pretty tight here, but I've got a space there, so I should be able to shift that in there just like that. I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, everything fits. Um, when you're butting this stuff together, uh, something else I guess I didn't mention is uh, you should bring this product in and climatize it to the house for a couple days too. So don't just bring it in from outside or in the garage or the lumber store or whatever and cut it and put it in. It needs to climatize just a little bit, stabilize to your humidity and, and temperature. But also, even though this stuff's actually been in here about a week, I don't like to put the, joint, the two sheets right tight together. I wanna leave, not, you don't even need a sixteenth, but just, just enough of a spot there that if things expand or anything a little bit, which is usually what's gonna happen, uh, they don't put too much pressure there and kinda 
because what they have a tendency to do is, and I'm over exaggerating, but they'll want to do this and create a ridge there. So I'm just leaving a bit of a spot or a bit of a space. So if they do that, they can. And I'm just going to tack that in. Oop, all kinds of stuff coming out of the vent. So on your sheets where you've, uh, like I said, you noticed before where the, the uh, fastening points are a lot closer together at any edges. But of course, once you cut your sheet, you uh, end up cutting those off. So just remember that, you know, like across the doorway here, I want to actually go, you know, about three inches apart on there. Uh, the edge of the tub's still got the factory line on it. So just, just be kind of aware of that when you're stapling it down to make sure any joints and edges are uh, stapled twice as much. So, so I'm going to uh, get my compressor plugged in, get my stapler going and staple this which doesn't take long compared to the nailing. Okay, so I've got my stapler and compressor and everything all set up. Um, more importantly than anything, as far as where to start with stapling is, I usually pick a wall and try to work my way, you know, across the room. Uh, the reason for that is just so that you don't miss a spot, especially with the staples. It's, if you staple right on the black dot, it's actually hard to see the, the hole afterwards. So, uh, it's easy to get sidetracked and kind of miss what you've already done. So um, another thing that's good is I like to be sitting right on the, the area I'm, I'm stapling. Just use my body weight to my advantage. Uh, I'm a little chubby. So it just helped hold the floor down tight to each other um, so that uh, you're not getting any spaces there. And if you notice back here, uh, I've got to cut them yet. The pieces I cut out of these slots I will just cut the end off and, and use them kind of to fill in there to fill in most of that gap. Now, honestly, in this situation, I might not even do that because it's under the vanity. It'll never be seen. Um, but if it's out in a spot that's seen like behind the water valve there for the toilet, I'll pop a little plug of the of scrap in there just so it um, takes up that void. Okay, so uh, it's a little loud with the stapler and everything, so I probably won't talk much. Pretty self-explanatory as far as uh, using the stapler. Uh, this one has a safety or whatever, but they're all a little bit different. So there's no point in explaining this exact unit to you. So you can see the stapler works really well. The, uh, the main thing to remember, whether you're stapling or, or using the ring nails and hammering them in, is that the fastener isn't sticking up above the surface. You want it to actually inset just that little bit and then you shouldn't have any issues. If you're using the stapler, you just want to make sure that it's not, your pressure isn't too high and it's firing the staple way too low too. Uh, you know, if, as long as they're about a sixteenth of an inch set in there, no more than an eighth um, it, with this type of thickness of product, uh, you should be all right. So just adjust your compressor to until it does what you need it to do. So there's no point in me showing you finishing stapling this whole room but uh, you got the basic idea I'm just following the the marks that they give you right on there it can't get any simpler than that and uh, filling in some extra ones along the edges where we've done some cuts so so I think that's about all I can tell you um, you can uh, check out check out our website you might have been there already you might not have been but check it out we've got lots of articles there on other topics for DIYers uh, we've got the forum link there so you can get into the forum and ask questions or look around see what other people are wanting to know maybe you can help them out and uh, then obviously uh, you're watching this probably on youtube so uh, click on our channel link and check out all the other videos we have